Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series on Bayesian Confirmation Theory and the Paradox of Dogmatism as part of our larger series on Bayesian Epistemology as a whole. This is going to be our last video in Bayesian Confirmation Theory where we are going to look at a very specific version of the Paradox of Dogmatism. If you want a less rigorous and more intuitive version of this Paradox for Bayesian Confirmation Theory, check out the previous video. And if you're confused by anything I'm saying here, I would encourage you to watch the rest of the series because this is a pretty complicated topic. So, this is going to be the new paradox of dogmatism and how Bayesian epistemology can avoid it. Let's take a look. So, the new paradox of dogmatism is going to be formulated as follows. If you're certain of some belief P and you are rational, then you must hold P in the face of all evidence. If you hold P in the face of contradictory evidence, then you're not rational. It's going to be premise two, and therefore it is irrational to be certain of anything. Basically, this is showing there's a conflict between our inductive definition of rationality in premise one and our deductive definition of probability in premise two. What we're going to do here is first demonstrate that the argument is valid and then offer some justification or some possible reasons you believe one and two. So, first off, some definitions. RS is going to stand for a subject S is rational. CSP is a subject S is certain that P or S has a degree of belief of 1 in P. And ASPQ is going to be a subject S would alter their degree of belief in P if presented with Q. We're not saying to what would alter it at all in any way. Now, Premise one is going to be kind of codified or turned into logic in the following way. For all S and all P and all Q, S is certain that P and S is rational implies that it's not the case that S would alter their belief in P given that Q. And premise two will codify as for all S and all P, it's not the case that S would alter their belief that P given that not P implies that S is not rational. And finally, our conclusion we will express as, for all S and all P, S is certain that P implies that it's not the case that S is rational. All right, let's see if we can prove this argument with our laws of deductive logic. So first off, we'll start with a universal instantiation of premise one. X is certain that Y and X is rational implies that it's not the case that X would alter their belief in Y given that not Y. We're instantiating S as X, P as Y, and Q as not Y in this case. We'll also do universal instantiation on premise two to get it's not the case that X would alter their belief that Y, given that not Y, implies that X is not rational, instantiating S as X and P as Y. Then we'll go ahead and connect those two with a hypothetical syllogism to get X is certain that Y and X is rational implies it's not the case that X is rational. Exportation gives us X is certain that Y implies that X is rational implies that X is not rational. X is certain that Y implies that it's not the case that X is rational, or it's not the case that X is rational by premise 6 implication. Then a tautology on that gives us X is certain that Y implies that it's not the case that X is rational. We can then go ahead and universally generalize that back to, for all S and all P, S being certain that P implies it's not the case that S is rational, which is the conclusion we're looking for. Now that we've demonstrated the argument to be valid, let's take a look at some reasons you might think that it's sound. So, the first premise, as I've mentioned, we've offered a kind of more intuitive, less rigorous explanation of why this might be the case in the previous video. So if you're interested, check that out. We can also prove it to be the case with a Dutch book. So imagine someone named Bjorn has the following degrees of belief. Probability of X initial is 1, the probability of Y initial is 0.5, the probability of X and Y initial is 0.5, and the probability of X given that Y is 1. Note that we could really fill in whatever we wanted for our probability of Y initial. The key is that our degree of belief in X initial is 1. The house is going to sell Bjorn the following wagers. 
a wager that pays 10 cents if y is true for 5 cents, and a wager that pays $1 if x is true, conditional on y, for $1. It may seem very strange for Bjorn to buy the second wager, but remembering with our Dutch book rules, if someone is certain at something, they're willing to pay a dollar for it with the only possibility of winning that dollar back. Now imagine that y is false, a wager that pays 10 cents if y is true for 5 cents, and a wager that pays $1 if x is true, conditional on y for $1. The first wager, Bjorn is going to lose 5 cents, and on the second wager, that's just going to be called off, and no one's going to win or lose anything, because it's conditional on y being true. So overall, Bjorn is going to lose 5 cents. Now imagine that y is true. If this is the case, the house is going to sell Bjorn a following wager because he's going to change his degree of belief to 0.9. He's only lessened it a very, very small amount, his degree of belief in x. But his final degree of belief in x has changed. Therefore, he's going to be inductively irrational and caught in a diachronic Dutch book. Because the house will sell him the following wager, a wager that pays $1 if x is false for just 10 cents. Note that when he has the degree of belief of 0.9 that x is true, he also has the degree of belief of 0.1 that x is false. So if y is true and x is true, we have three wagers to analyze. The first wager, he's going to win 5 cents on that one because y is true. On the second wager, he's going to win $0 because it was the case, but remember he only paid a dollar with the possibility of getting back that same dollar, and he's going to lose 10 cents on the last wager for a net loss of 5 cents. And finally, if y is true and x is false, once again we have these three wagers to look over. The first wager he's going to win again, because y is true. The second wager he's going to lose that dollar, because it pays a dollar if x is true conditional on y. y was true and x is false, so he loses that dollar. And a wager that pays one dollar if x is false for 10 cents, he's going to win a total of 90 cents on that wager but he's still going to have a net loss of 5 cents because he won 95 cents and lost a dollar. So no matter what happens, Bjorn, with those sets of degrees of belief, is going to be in a diachronic Dutch book. Why? Because he changed his certainty in his belief that X. So once again, you are certain of a proposition. As soon as you're certain of something, you must never change that belief. Bayesians are committed to the hardiness of knowledge, which we remember from our original video on the paradox of dogmatism. Denying the hardiness of knowledge was how the normal epistemus was able to get out of this paradox. Now our justification for premise 2 is going to be a little bit shorter because this just simply returns to our classic deductive non-probabilistic definition of rationality. You can't believe both x and not x. If you believe that p in the face of not p, you're irrational. That's just our deductive definition of rationality. Sure, you can deny the law of the excluded middle, perhaps or the law of non-contradiction, and express a new version of rationality, but the Bayesian right now, in all the forms of Bayesian epistemology has been offered, is committed to our classical logic definition of rationality. It would be very interesting, however, for someone to offer a Bayesian epistemology that is not based on classical logic and based on some non-classical logic. I haven't seen it done. I'd be very interested to see someone maybe make a video on that. Think about it. And finally, therefore, it is irrational to be certain of anything. It may seem that this applies skepticism, which I would love, but it doesn't. Very high but not certain degrees of belief in particular propositions is not the same as a suspension of belief that the skeptic would want to get you to. The point is that just because it's irrational to be certain of anything doesn't mean that we give up the ghost or we give up the game. The point is that Bayesians are allowed to have degrees of belief. So they don't lose if they're not allowed to be certain of anything, at least not at this point. We're going to look at, in our objection series, some of the problems with this kind of fallout from the solution to the dogmatism paradox, but the Bayesian isn't down for the count yet. So that was Bayesian confirmation theory. Next up, we'll take a 
quick look at a couple different variations of Bayesianism, and then start another mini-series on objections to Bayesian epistemology. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. Check out the SEP for more information on all of this. That's where I'm getting my information, and stay skeptical, everybody.